Good day, everyone. I'm Miss Mbele for Management Communication and 4. We continue with our Module 1, Lesson 2, Basic Com Communication Principles. For this lesson, we are still using the same textbook, N4 Communication and Management Communication, say it in plain English by Wade and Stienkamp. For this lesson, we are going to consider page 16 to page 40 of our textbooks. Lesson two of module one, we're going to look at interpersonal communication, which is verbal communication and nonverbal communication. And we're also going to look at listening skills. Interpersonal communication. What is interpersonal communication? Uh, interpersonal communication is whereby you are communicating with other people, either verbal or nonverbal. When we talk about verbal communication, it's where you are using words to speak with other people, writing, reading, and listening. Uh, there's a, a two types of verbal communication. It can be direct oral communication or indirect oral communication. In case of our teaching and learning during COVID-19, we are using indirect oral communication, whereby we are using devices in order to send uh, oral communication to you and you listen to what I am saying, you can rewind, you can go forward in order to listen to what I have said. There is also non-verbal communication, whereby we are talking about using means other than words when you are talking to the other uh, people, using body language in support of your verbal communication. When you are speaking and saying hi, you also wave your hand up to show that you are saying hi to the other person. You are acknowledging they, they are a greeting as well. In the, uh, during the nonverbal communication, a person who, who is a sender and a receiver must, have, must use uh, their senses, the visual semiology, the acoustic semiology, and tasics. When we talk about visual semiology, it's where you need to use your, your sight. You must be able to see what I am doing um, with my body language, with my hands, or when I'm sitting, then you need to see what I am doing in order to understand my uh, message. With acoustic semiology, you must, your, your hearing uh, senses must be good as well so that you can hear what I am saying. Also, we talk about tasics, which is um, using nonverbal communication, using touch when you are touching the other person. Then that is using of senses. There are different types of fat, of uh, communication. There is fatigue communication, whereby you use words to convey feeling rather than meaning. When you are starting a conversation or opening a conversation, you will say, how are you? And the person will say, I'm fine. You are just starting a conversation. That is good interpersonal social relations that you are creating. You are not asking a person, how are you? Because you want them to give you a summary of how they are feeling. Uh, maybe they are disappointed or they are sick. You are just starting a conversation. That is fatigue communication. There is also visual semiology. When we talk about visual semiology, is where we are saying that you, your vision or your eyesight must be good in order to see the body movements of the other person. When we talk about kinesics, body movements, it talks about your facial expressions. When you are frowning, you are not happy or you are not sure of what the person is saying or you are not happy about what the person is saying your gesture and your postures as well. The way that you sit also convey a certain meaning as well. Proxemics is a distance or it's a study of a distance space between the contact or human communication. When we talk about the space, it's whereby we look at four different zones. There's an intimate zone, there's a personal zone, there's a social zone and there's a public zone. And the intimate zone is for novels, friends and family only. That zone must be about half a meter between the sender and the receiver. The half a meter is when you stretch your hand forward as you reach your elbow. 
that is your uh, half a meter, which means the space between the sender and the receiver has got only half a meter space between them. The personal zone, it's a zone of half a of half and one meter between sender and the receiver which means as you stretch your hand as you reach right at the end of your of your hand that's where you will find your um your meter between the sender and the receiver it's normally used uh, in the office space where you speak to your colleague you use your personal zone then there is social zone which is one and two meters between the sender and the receiver. There is furniture in between the two of us. There is a, a, a desk that is separating the sender and the receiver. That is the social zone. There is also a public zone, which is about three meters between the sender and the receiver. And it's normally used for public uh, speaking or public addresses, whereby the, 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 the sender is uh, has got a space of about three meters between him and the receivers of the information there's also graphic presentation and the visual semiology where you create graphs in order to present statistics let's say i want to uh, uh, to show the past rates of management communication and for students then i will create a graph that will show how many has read as passed and reached 50 percent how many has passed pass and reached 60 percent up to a hundred percent there is color coding a uh, color as well also um send a message it's a, a way of uh, communicating to the public if there is red it means there is danger you need to uh, or caution you need to walk there with uh, caution because there is some danger around there general appearance also convey certain attitudes towards others the way that you appear the way that you dress up when you go to the office you dress up in a formal suit or in a formal way or um, semi-casual when you are going to the office environment to show confidence, your status, value and ambition. Signs and symbols, you see the road signs along the road whereby you haven't reached Lady Smith as yet, but there's already a sign saying to you 95 kilometers to Lady Smith. So the sign tells you how many kilometers are you still going to drive in order to reach uh, Lady Smith. Those are the things that needs your eyes in order to be able to see it. Those are the visual semiology. Acoustic semiology, you need to hear. Uh, there's paralinguistic, the way you use your voice, your tone, tempo, rhythm, and accent. The accent is whereby we say, if you've got a certain accent, people might not be able to hear you when you are speaking to them. And a person who comes from England, it can take you a little bit of a while to be able to hear what they are saying if you are not familiar with their accent. When you are speaking, the rhythm of your voice, the tone of your voice mustn't be a monotonous voice. It mustn't be quick. It, must, it mustn't be slow, it mustn't be uh, faster, but it must be a medium tone of voice. You must also use your filler sounds. You must be able to hear the hesitation markers where a person will say, mm, you are not saying anything, but you are taking a break. Those are the pause fillers or the hesitation markers. The music as well, it's also acoustic semiology. The slow, soft, soothing music, says that this is a calm peaceful place that you are entering you will see that when you go to the shops the shops where the teenagers they buy they shop or they buy their clothing the music is different from the place where the elders and the people professional people go and buy their clothing then the, the, the music at the teenage shop will find that it's quicker and it's very loud but when you go to the adult shop you'll find that the music is slow soft soothing music silence silence is another way of not saying anything they say it can be positive it can be negative it can be neutral silence means concern as you're not saying anything you're saying i am agreeing with you 
as you are not saying anything, I am still thinking about it. As you are not saying uh, anything, you are saying that I'm, I am against what you uh, have said to me. That's what silence means. Interpersonal communication, which is using touch, tasics. Uh, as you hug the person, you are showing comfort and sympathy. It can be encouragement. You tap a person at the back or on the shoulder, then you're saying congratulations, went well done. If you hold a person very hard, aggressively, that means you are showing aggression. That's the way that you are speaking to a person when you touch a person. When you brush the person at the back, you are showing affection, sympathy, or a comfort. Those are the difference, different ways of talking to a person using touch. Nonverbal communication can be cultural related. Uh, when we talk about proxemics, which is the distance between the sender and the receiver, certain cultures, they need a distance between them when they are speaking. Certain cultures, they don't mind the distance at all. Eye contact in the African culture, you mustn't uh, look at the uh, elder person straight into the eye, but in the Western culture, you need to look at the person straight into the eye to show that you are not hiding anything. There is posture, there is touch, there is uh, color difference as well. And when we talk about color, a black uh, a color is for mourning, um, white for a, a certain um, uh, uh, Eastern cultures, uh, white is for mourning. So we use color in different ways as well in different cultures. Listening skills. As the receiver, you must have good listening skills. There are different types of listening skills, three different types of listening skills, attentive listening, critical listening, appreciative listening. Attentive listening is whereby you as a listener, you must pay attention to the speaker and identify and understand their main point of view of what they are saying. As a critical listener, you evaluate and judge the speaker and analyze what is being said. If you are watching a television or if you are listening to an advert, you evaluate and judge and analyze that advert that is being sent to you or whatever advert that you are listening to. Appreciative listening, it's whereby you listen to a speaker in a group, listen first and then react. There is positive, uh, when we talk about appreciative listening, appreciative listening is positive listening, whereby you gather the information, then you react at the end. As a, a receiver of the message, you need to provide feedback. And when you are providing feedback, it means the, the communication process was effective. You can either provide feedback by verbal using filler sounds and say, mm, ah, which shows that you are still listening to me, or a non-verbal uh, feedback where you are nodding to the person to show that you can hear what they are saying. For this lesson, do practical activity. What is the difference between verbal communication and non-verbal communication? There is a difference between the two. List and explain different types of non-verbal communication. We have looked at them. Read your book as well in order to understand what are those uh, different types of non-verbal communication? What are the benefits or advantages of effective listening? Thank you for listening. Enjoy your studies. This is end of module one.